we had to take one of my aunts to the emergency room a few years ago. And she was not acting her normal self. And we were concerned. We thought she was perhaps having a stroke. So we took her to the emergency room. And as they were assessing her symptomology, of course, they do. Oh, it's like it's like a standard list of questions to assess mm-hmm. people's cognitive abilities. But every person that came in the room did it. So mm. by the, about the fifth time that they've gone through this exact same list of questions, my 80-something-year-old aunt looks them and says, all right, I don't feel good. It's the middle of the night. And for heaven's sakes, I am old, not stupid. <laughs> yeah. It was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> that poor person just looked up and I said in her defense you are the sixth person to run through that series of questions <laughs> she went a very thin list uh-huh. and she went oh I had no idea and she went tearing out of the room she must have been pretty young in her career in the emergency room <laughs> but the poor thing she just got nailed with I'm old that's stupid I was like yes go for it you tell them but in the in for people that aren't there yet people that are still in their mid 40s and their 50s and even younger people is there anything that people can do to you know prevent or delay dementia And that's a wonderful question, and so many people are giving this a lot of attention. The the answer isn't utterly clear. So let me start with um, the simple answer, which is we never figured out how to prevent stroke. We never figured out how to prevent heart disease. We haven't figured out how to prevent dementia. But you brought up the word delay, which I think is interesting. Let's say you're born with some sort of risk level, some genetic risk level of stroke or cancer or heart disease or dementia. Why raise your risk by doing things like not exercising? Why raise your risk by smoking? Raising your risk by not taking care of your diabetes. Um, All these people who say we can prevent dementia I think what they're doing is they can make you so healthy that you could get yourself down to what is your actual risk. Now, when the scientists figured out how to, how to handle the genes, <laughs> your genetic risk, maybe we can actually prevent these diseases. But at least let's be so extremely healthy by using our brains, using our bodies, um, exercising, eating right, sleeping. Oh, sleep. I bet a lot of your listeners have heard this one. The dementia called Alzheimer's actually has a buildup of a certain protein called amyloid. Sleep actually helps clear amyloid out of your brain. We know sleep is healthy, but now they're finding out why it's healthy and why different foods are healthy and why different supplements can be healthy. None of them actually prevent the disease at this point, unfortunately. No, but you see people that, you know, actually do much better than other people. And they could be, you know, sisters or brothers. I I knew some twin sisters. One led a very chaotic life. Um, She smoked. She had um, really miserable love affairs and marriages. She had lots of disaster and poverty in her life. Her twin fell into a lovely life with um, a wonderful marriage, and they owned a business. They both got Alzheimer's disease. The twin who had the chaotic, stressful life, because stress also affects a part of your brain called the hippocampus, where Alzheimer's starts, um, she got Alzheimer's really hard, really bad, and uh, I need to bring up the word death. And she died 
um, within just a couple of years of diagnosis. Her twin, 15 years later, is still alive. She kind of can't do the books at work anymore, but she can utterly do things like cook and dress herself and, you know, have a nice life. So, yeah, you'll have brother and sister, both with the disease, but one had a healthier life than the other. And in the end, oh, it yeah. showed. It, it in the end, rang it showed. True. Yes, absolutely. Just like it does for a lot of other things. Isn't that amazing? And, you know, I try not to dwell on it because I don't want people to feel like I criticize or anything. But if you're making some of those lifestyle choices that you've mentioned, you're also spending an awful lot of money on um, optional things in your life Mm -hmm. that are going to not help you enjoy life to its fullest or for its longest. So it's definitely a choice for people to think about you know, do I want the fullest, longest life or do I want to indulge in this, this, and this? It's a choice. They have to make their own choice and live with what they did. But it is so um, interesting that you bring that up. And it's fascinating that there are twins that the situation was so much different for the two of them. And it's not just anecdotal. The people in dementia research have done what they call twin studies. And it plays out over and over again. Wow. Wow. Does it play out even if the twins are like, I have a cousin who was adopted and she was a twin and they were separated at birth. Have they done studies in cases like that where the twins didn't get raised in the same environment and they're totally different? everything except for their genetics and DNA? I have to admit I don't know the answer to that question. Like you, I've certainly run across various twin studies, but with those extraordinary coincidences of how both twins will get married at the same age and have different life things, um, life events happening even though they were separate. If those studies don't exist, they, they ought to, shouldn't they? Yeah, it would be kind of interesting to see. It certainly would be. Um, What else is going on? We have about three minutes left. So what Mm -hmm. else is going on at Memory Lane? I think there was an announcement this morning of some new thing that's coming. We do. We have a new project where we saw how much support we were giving to not only our caregivers um, of people who come to the day center, But people would just be calling us up from the public saying, how do I get my ma to stop driving? Or what should we do about um, my dad's hunting and having firearms? Or why is it that every time I open my mouth, she yells at me? (laughs) (laughs) Could I be handling this differently? And so we do a lot of education by phone. So we thought, let's sign up for there's an evidence-based program that we will make this more formal. We're actually going to look for caregivers that that we can um, be um, educating, and we'll we'll do it in a coaching format um, form where we would refer them to resources and help them feel strong enough that they could actually call those resources, although I recognize sometimes people can't, and you have to call for them, don't you? In, in your work, too. Every once um, in a while, yeah. Yeah, every once in a while. Not everyone can do. And so we're going to get in, involved more in caregiving coaching. And we'll have a special emphasis on um, persons with intellectual disabilities. We're not the expert on that, so we've got community partners um, helping those family caregivers. And um, the ones who tug at my heart, people with dementia who live by themselves, not all of them Um, would have the cognitive ability to be coached, but to try to find someone in their life who could help this person who lives by herself. Many, many people with dementia live by themselves. 
And then also just general caregiving, lots of coaching, educating, helping them understand. You'll have 60 years of communicating with people a certain way, usually by trying to reason with them, like um, trying to get them on the same page as you. But if, if they've left the ability to reason, well, how do you communicate with someone who can't reason? What are the strategies? Cool. So we've been, we're going to share our, our knowledge about those things like communication. Awesome. It sounds like it's going to be fabulous. So our time has come to an end, but it has been so phenomenally educational for people to know. So they can get in touch with you by calling the Memory Lane Care Center. Um, let's see, 419-720-4940. And there's also a website, Memory Lane Care Services, with an S, dot org. All one big long word. So if you yeah. need more information or if you would like to get a speaker for your group, which would be awesome, um, reach out. It is fabulous. So thank you so much for being with us today, Cheryl. We really appreciated all the information and the insight. Oh, Rhonda, thank you for the opportunity. There's so many people out there who are, you know, trying to figure this out, and we, we like to get the word out to help them. Awesome. Well, I'm glad that we can help, and I hope that everyone who has a loved one in this situation will realize there is another alternative, and perhaps it's time to explore it, you know, not because you can't do it, but because you need a little break now and again, like once a day. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. And now, just like all the time, you know what I'm going to say before I say it. Be grateful, and you will attract good things. Until next time, this is Rhonda Cobb, The Money Coach. <laughs>